Hello, it's Kim here and I have not been present on YouTube for a while, have I? It's a busy time of year. What with all my usual uh, responsibilities, it's the time of growing and watering and weeding and harvesting and medicine making. So if I thought I don't get on with something now, you'll wonder where I've gone to and I'd like to welcome aboard all the new subscribers as well. Thank you for coming along to this humble little channel. And since it's June, I thought the herb we must do is the one that's related absolutely to its uh, flowering time and its uh, uh, veneration, shall I say, at this time of year. It's St John's Wort or Hypericum. And yesterday on Midsummer's Day, I did a little clip as I found some up on the downland. So let's just take a quick look at that. Skylark singing, Jasper thinking, Mally eating the herbs. Here we are on Midsummer's Day and here's the Hypericum, the St John's wort that's coming out. I just wanted to quickly show you the best way to harvest this. It can be a bit woody, but if you find a patch and you want to make sure that you're not A, going to take too much and help the plant, if you just get this top part of the plant and you can nip it out with a little bit of secateurs or with your thumb and finger, and then you end up with a little bit like that because most of the constituents that you really want are in the flowers which has got the highest content of the red oil, the hypericin and the leaves so, so it's a bit blurry isn't it, there we go beautiful plant welcome to hypericin to lean above and over the light of and above over us yeah, the dogs are still hot. They're lying in the house from their walk today as well. And uh, here's, here's some more sun, St John's Wort, a little bit from my garden. So let's just, first of all, go through the name because I think that helps us embed the plant in our understanding. So the Latin is Hypericum perforatum, which uh, Hypericum means to be over and above, and I think it's related to iconography as well. Um, it's a protective herb, so it relates to its protective uh, properties in terms of being obnoxious to evil. So no doubt this is why it got interwoven into the Christian tradition as uh, St John's wort. So let's just go back to the Hypericum though. The Hypericum perforatum, the perforatum bit, refers to this apps, this species of Hypericum. There are other garden cultivars that you might be familiar of, like Rose of Sharon, um, of, of this, which they don't have the strength of medicinal properties as as the wild growing one or you can you can grow this in your garden so you won't be able to really see that and sorry excuse my dirty fingernails i've just been pressing the birch leaves so within the little uh, leaves there's little pin pick holes uh, which are full of oil glands as there are on the flower heads um which I don't think you can quite pick up here. And that's part of the really active constituents that we like for hypericum, the hypericin oil, which is a very red oil. So what you can do is gather this, uh, pack it into a clean jam jar, pour some olive oil or maybe sunflower oil, but olive oil is better, I think, uh, and leave it in a sunny sunny place for a couple of weeks and you'll just see all that red oil come out. Or you can put it in a in the oven at a very low heat and again strain it off and you'll get you'll get the lovely oil and um, I'll go through its uses in a minute and just to refer back to yes to its name St John's wort so associated with its flowering time with uh, St John the Baptist's feast day which is Saturday the 24th of June this year um, so the St John the Baptist the cousin the precursor of Christ so the the Again, these sort of protective forces, this understanding that there was traditions of collecting this herb on the eve of the saint's day, passing it through a fire, and then it was being cleansed. And then they'd hang, people would hang it outside their cattle briars and outside their houses for protection. Um, and also there's a prayer, I think there's a prayer that goes with St John the Baptist, which talks to the ability to speak boldly to truth. I'm... Um, all for that in our day and age. So historically, 
let's think about how herbs are used. And part of my thinking has been lately is of how we keep our knowledge of herbal medicine alive. And it really would have been central to just about every household and any, every village understanding. You'd have your wise woman, wise men um, who would know how to use certain plants uh, for, uh, for all sorts of conditions. And that really brings me to just thinking about how we conserve and restore knowledge. You know, it's very much embedded in our family structures, I would suggest, as being a healthy place. And invariably, it probably was the women who were, you know, the domain, their power domain was the kitchen, you know, providing the uh, the larders were filled and the medicine chests and the medicine bottles were filled throughout the year. And that transmission from the elder women down through, you know, the mothers and to the younger generations so everyone would imbibe this knowledge and roll with it and uh, you know and expand their, their understandings through the years of how different conditions uh climate you know cl weather conditions sorry not climate stuff uh, affect it from year to year and particular conditions of the animals and people of what it's it responds to so i'm very much uh, a, a proponent that we keep our knowledge embedded within our within our family structures so with regards to st john's wort and to say a wort is an anglo-saxon word for something that works so st john's wort a plant that is of benefit and of use to us so if we read the old herbals so someone like culpepper who's one of my heroes who published the english herb you know, Culpepper's Herbal and the English physician uh, around about the 1640s. He translated it from the Latin into the English because he wanted the, the common people to have access to herbal knowledge and medicine making. He was really fed up with the exclusiveness of the, you know, the, uh, the doctors keeping it to themselves and the poor quality, actually, because the apothecaries... <laughs> Uh, had very little Latin and the pharmacopoeia was all written in Latin so he wrote it in English so that people f very easily could access this knowledge for themselves so this is part of what we're continuing on our little internet YouTube journeys here so traditionally there's lots of writings about it being for wound healing whether that's externally so I think one of its other common names is um, uh, the balm for warriors' wounds, uh, so you would use use it on damaged skin. Uh, there's also writings about it being used internally for swellings and tumours and uh, contusions inside. So uh, whether that be the herb or actually the seed, traditionally there was a lot of seed used, and that just makes my mind boggle because there must have been a lot of it growing because it's a tiny seed and you'd have to gather a lot of it up to get something that's going to be um, medically efficacious or you know in, in a quantity. Also, we can uh, think about it in terms of modern research, the last sort of 20 years or so, lots of research into it for its effect on the central nervous system and for uh, sort of depressive states, anxious states, and herbally it's been well known, it's been very good for combating that sort of overwhelm and anxious and low low mood. Um, I'm just thinking I use it, a, it all sorts of uses I say it's one of my top 10 herbs in the dispensary so quite a specific for menopausal women for that overwhelm and agitation um, any you know low depleted states poor sleep it will help with um, and also neurologically uh, directly onto the skin it's really beneficial so if there's anything like sci sciatica even things like shingles pain so when the pain is going down the nerve you can use some of the oil and just gently rub that over the area and that will really bring a lot of relief to it. Internally also it's got lots of usage in, in that it's um, antibacterial, it's specific for gram negative and gram positive bacteria. It's also antiviral um, so it's really great for uh, uh, infectious conditions in and also for convalescing as well and the French actually write about it a lot in terms of its use for uh, respiratory diseases and that's how I use it a lot as well and I use it a lot for when people are getting over infections to say you know so we have our acute stage and then we do need that resting you know building ourselves back up again really important uh, thing to do uh, otherwise we just get depleted
again and um, just just going back to skin things actually just very recent example I'm thinking of like my my mother who's in her 80s can't see a GP for love nor money but she had this uh, skin lesion which was you know it was looking a bit worrisome to me um but i said well let's just put some st john's water oil on it and actually because she thought it might have been an old wound that was just just irritating her and actually overnight the first application she did the whole thing changed um to, and really calmed down and disappeared so that's just really a little example of how powerful um it is in its application you can also use it, uh, it's really great for children um, bedwetting, so at night you know you can make a tea of that because it just help, it helps actually the nerve endings um, and that feedback message. So it's, if, this is a really quick rattle through of um, what you can do, so you can make the oil, you can then actually heat the oil and add a little bit of beeswax and depending how much you add you can then get a soft ointment or a harder ointment, so that's one way you can use it. In the home you can also when you've gathered up you know a little posy bunch of the, this herb you could get a jam jar clean jam jar get some vodka which is a nice clean spirit and pour that on top and that will make you what's called a tincture and you so you put that in a cupboard for two to three weeks make sure it's all sealed and in the dark and then you strain that off and then you've got a herbal tincture which you can then have in your medicine chest so that is a really as i say quick rattle through of um hypericum i need to go out and gather some more i i make liters of the stuff you know i've got some growing in the garden which interesting is slower to mature than the stuff out on the downland but um i hope you go out and are able to find some and maybe do a bit of gorilla herbal gardening yourself in that if you've got a garden you start to grow it yourself or scatter some seeds along some footpaths so that we you know take care of our land in the proper way and make sure these plants are around us because they are our medicine chest um despite the forces that would rather we didn't know about them um and don't want you know want us dependent on um, things that come out of a factory there's so much we can do for ourselves so thanks for listening sorry it's been such a rattle through and i hopefully will then make myself ping a few more um, videos out on some other herbs that I'm working with. May you be well and um, see you again soon. 